So this is just a short video which I'm doing to go alongside the review I have written for Andrew to go on the horror oasis of Glenn Rolfe's latest book from Flame Tree Press which is called August's Eyes. Now anyone who knows me even a little bit knows that I love Glenn. He's my favourite writer in like the whole entire world so you can take this review with that in mind. But there's a reason why Glenn's my favourite writer and it's not just because he's my friend and an awesome person because I met him through his writing. So to tell you that I was excited about this book and that I had built it up and was really looking forward to it will be no surprise. I was hoping that I might have been able to get a physical paperback copy um, as an ARC but they're not coming until round about June time so I've been told by Flame Tree. So, I had to do something I've not done for a long time, which was log back on to my NetGalley account. Now the reason I haven't done that was because when I was on NetGalley, I'd be like, ooh, ooh, look at that. Request, 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 request. And um, I ended up with so many, and then I didn't end up reading them all, uh, which was naughty. Although most of the ones I'd requested over on there, which were flame tree ones, I ended up getting the physical copies for and all that kind of thing. Anyway, long story short, I hadn't been on that galley for ages because I just couldn't resist. I see a cover that I like and I, and I want it and I just have got too many things already to read. So um, I logged back onto my account and like, because I got the nod from flame tree and like within minutes it's there. I download it, started reading straight away. Um, I said on the review as well, I was at, uh, and I live tweeted, I was angry, angry, not with the book, but because I had to adult, I had to cook dinner, I had to go to bed, uh, and all these kind of things that you have to do, which means that it was getting in the way of reading, and I woke up really early the next morning, even though it was a weekend, and it was mama's turn for a lion, all this kind of stuff, got up early so I could finish it, so I read the whole thing within 24 hours. So you might be able to get from that that I pretty much enjoyed it. So one of the things I like most about Glenn's writing is that for me it's so immersive. You feel that you are in the story. He brings his characters to life um, and I'm a sucker for coming of age and I love stories about teenagers especially if they're set back in the 80s or the 90s which was my time and Although our main character um, is an adult called John and we follow his relationship with his wife Sarah where things are not going quite as swimmingly as they could be. We also have a, uh, a major secondary character called, character called Patrick who is um, a 15 year old boy and I really enjoyed his storyline as well. He's linked to John in so far that um, John was his social worker and helped him and his mother and his little sister so there's almost like a fatherly relationship there as well. So in a nutshell August's Eyes is about John who is going through some relationship difficulties with his wife Sarah. They've been desperately trying for a baby for many years and so far it hasn't happened and Glenn does discuss that um, quite candidly within the book and as a mother that made me rush and give my kitty a, a big hug and be very grateful for having her and there will be people that read that that maybe have been through the same kind of thing but it is integral to the storyline because it allows them to make mistakes and uh, make decisions that perhaps they wouldn't have made if everything was all um, all rosy, which life really isn't anyway. Um, and John's been having these dreams about the um, titular character uh, August um, and another um, boy called No Eyes. And the dreams are quite creepy and suspenseful and they definitely are the story where the horror element comes in. This is, if you've um, if you've read 
more of Glenn's work and if not why not but if you're expecting things like the kind of the splatter punky um, or, or sexually explicit violence and vibes and blood and stuff from things like um, Blood and Rain, The Haunted Halls, The Window especially that kind of stuff we haven't got that here uh, this is almost a thriller that's how it's presented like a mystery thriller um, and because of one of the main characters being like the bogeyman driving around in his van and he is a paedophile and all this kind of stuff um, I likened some of the bits to one of my other favourite writers, my favourite non-horror writer who is Dennis Lehane um, now whether that was solely because of the era, um, the setting with um, Lehane doing a lot of New Englandy stuff as well um, and uh, one of my all-time favourite books is Gone Baby Gone by Lehane, which is about paedophiles and all that kind of stuff. So I did get that kind of feeling as well. Um, uh, it is a horror because there are horrific elements to it um, and supernatural elements and whatnot. But it's not straight splattery kind of horror. Um, and why should it be? Because horror comes in all different guises and one could argue that things like um, there being a child molester and killer around is one of the most horrific things because it's real and that's just terrifying in itself um, but there are things within the story that you know there's a mystery to solve and who are these people in the dreams all that kind of stuff, which obviously all unravels and then we get a really a really good ending um, I had seen um, <laughs> I love Easter eggs and homages and all of that kind of stuff. I'm always named, half my characters are called after people I know. Um, I will name streets after, like surnames of people I know, all that kind of stuff. Um, I've like nods to other people's work, obviously with their permission in my stories and all that kind of stuff. I love that, I'm a sucker for it. Same with pop culture. Um, you know, if you're set in the 80s, tell me about the music, tell me about the clothes, name drop those films, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I did see another review uh, complain a little that there was too much of that. Um, and that there was one bit which I was like, yay! Because um, there's a, a character that's just briefly mentioned, Old Man Keesling of Devil's Creek Lane. Now, knowing Todd, Keesling and having read Devil's Creek I was like high five to that but apparently some people think that might be a bit cheesy I love that and if I hope they don't read my stuff then because it's just like riddled with all of those kind of homages and name texts and things and I don't think it's cheesy I think it's amazing I love that anyway by the by we all have our different opinions and things so needless to say I flipping loved this I thought it was brilliant I thought it was different from some of the other stuff that I've read of Glenn's I didn't think it was so different that I was shocked um, or that I wouldn't have been able to tell it was his if I did like a blind reading. Um, the styles, I think that it is quite similar to Until Summer Comes Around in that it's his voice and just because it isn't you know filled to the brim with all kinds of um, blood and all that sort of stuff, it, it's brilliant, it's utterly brilliant. But I am biased. I fully say that he's my favourite writer, but he's my favourite writer for a reason. And I would implore you still to read this, even if you think that you have seen other people saying that it's more of a thriller than full on horror. It has all of the horrific elements, but it does what Glenn does best and what makes him my favourite writer. He tells a bloody good story, a cinematic story. You feel that you know the characters. These are people that could live down your road. You feel that you are part of it. That's what he does. So I don't care if it isn't dripping in blood and guts and stuff like that. And this is coming from someone who's reading Ketchum and Lee and all of the extreme stuff, which I adore. But I also love brilliant writing and narrative and prose and it doesn't always matter what the subject matter is if their voice is that good and that's what Glenn is to me. So this has been my review of August Eyes um, which I received as an ARC from Flame Tree Press. Thank you very much Flame Tree as always your stuff rocks and um, it was obviously always going to be a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, 100% must read because anything of Glenn's is insta-buy for me. 
but it is amazing so please 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 check it out leave me a review thank you